Hey folks, this is Jake Davis, and this is my co-host, Scarlett Jean. And today, we are going to be breaking down for you the, my top five picks for the best westerns of all time. These, and of course, yeah, these are my personal picks. Uh, and with this particular, I decided to go based on, you know, what I best, what I most think films, they're only great and iconic, but really embody the ideal of the uh, of the western and, and what it represents uh anyhow uh, yeah let's get into it um number five i'm going to say the man who shot liberty valance from 1962 or 63 directed by john ford uh starring john wayne jimmy stewart and lee marvin this is easily uh, lee marvin playing is liberty valance is one of the you know, best villains in all of westerns if not in all of movies uh and the whole story here is Jimmy Stewart, while, you know, tell, recounts the tale of uh, him and, and John Wayne and the guy, Liberty Valance, who's famous uh, outlaw, famous outlaw, he was famous, he's famous for killing, which kind of led him to being, uh, becoming successful in public office. And the story is basically about how this uh, reputation was all built on lies and murder. And uh, the film ultimately is about the, the myth is more important than the truth. And, you know, very shady stuff. And uh, it's a dark film. It's a dark film where uh, one of John Wayne's finest performances. And I want to say something about it. You, know, you, you get a lot of uh, people shitting on John Wayne always from Hollywood. Mainly because of the man's politics. But you know what, that guy, uh, it's always pointed out in his films, you know, the characters standing up for, for immigrants and Native Americans and black people. You know, that, that there's a lot of that shit intentionally in John Wayne's films. So, you know, so, you know he may have voted Republican, but it didn't mean he didn't, he didn't hold fucking, I mean, he fucking was American, as American as it gets. He stood for American values, and one big American value is treating people equally. Uh, anyhow, the side rant there. Uh, but yeah, it's, uh, I believe it had Oscar winning, Oscar winning, I think, at least nominated, <laughs> costume design from Edith's head, and, you know, like I said, Marvin's great, and maybe my favorite Jimmy Stewart performance of all time. And it was, I be, it was kind of the film that really turned me around on, uh, when I was a little kid, on not just westerns, but, you know, black and white films. Uh, it's just a film that had a major, major effect on me as a young man, a young boy. Number four, I'm going to say The Outlaw Josie Wales, which I'm actually watching right now on, <laughs> on my TV. Uh, the, uh, I mean, the whole story of The Outlaw Josie Wales, 1976, written, uh, directed and starring Clint Eastwood. This was, I think, Clint Eastwood's first Western he directed. I might be wrong about that. But the whole storyline is Josie Wales is a farmer who's, uh, during the Civil War, whose family is brutally murdered by uh, Jayhawkers shortly after he joins um, uh, the Bushwhackers. Now, this guerrilla warfare, I mean, this is during the Middle Civil War, but, you know, they, these were both militia outfits. Neither one of them were, were really soldiers, you know, not really, really part of the military. I mean, they're soldiers, but they're not, they're not, they're not, in the military, you know what I mean. <laughs> Anyhow, uh, after the war, uh, his after his whole pl platoon, you know, they they surrender, and they're they're brutally murdered. They're un they're disarmed, and then they are slaughtered. And uh, Josie Wales goes on the run, and the movie's basically just him going around fucking people up for two and a half hours. Oops. At least until the movie's over. Sorry, baby. Uh, movie, this film was very, very influential. It was nominated for uh, Best Original Score. And I believe it was Roger Ebert's pick for Best Film of 76. Might be, it was one of his favorites. Um, the, uh, and also, you know, there's stuff like the, uh, the, 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 the story... The narrative is, was very inspiring, you know, towards um, uh, very much 
played into the 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 well, the first awful Wolverine movie that detached characters pop in and out um uh serialistic episodic uh style of the film not really a narrative just one set piece after the other uh yeah that 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 was and there's also something else that, that oh oh the, the look of the villain captain red legs terror was clearly the inspiration for the villain in antonio banderas's first zorro movie <coughs> capitan love which is a pretty cool movie that, that first zorro film the uh it's yeah, just brutal, amazing, awesome violence, and oh my god, so much badass dialogue. I mean, lines like, uh, and not just from, you know, Josie, you know, stuff like, you know, when Chief Dan George, you know, you know, hell's come to breakfast, and <laughs> the cold son of a bitch during the, the Gatling gun slaughter, these men were decently treated, they were decently fed, and then they were decently shot. <laughs> That's a great line. And, of course, the all-time greatest line in the movie, if not one of the greatest lines in all movie history. Guy says, Too bad we ain't got time to bury them fellers. Josie says, To hell with them fellers. Buzzards gotta eat. Same as worms. He spits on the son of a bitch. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Josie Wales is a classic. It's great. And, like I said, uh... Or, like I should say, you know, not just for its grisly, awesome, memorable, iconic violence and badassery, but also its deep themes and character stuff. We really see, we meet Josie Wales at a time of true peace and tranquility in his life, as far as we know, but we don't see any of that life. It's, it's instantly stolen from him. All we see is the brokenness, the pain, the hate. Uh, great character, great movie. Um... And, you know, also out him reluctantly against, you know, his wishes, his desires, and even him trying to force it, finds himself in a community again. It's good. It's really good, people. Uh, number three. I'm going to say, oh, one more thing uh, before I get off Josie Wales. Uh, Chief Dan George. Uh, I want to point out, he is one of only... There's always, every year, this year was no different when there's all this talk about lack of racial or minority representation in the academy well a lot of that's true but the scene is they always oh they only seem to talk about the one the one or two things so it's usually just uh female directors or black actors they don't care about any of the other categories at all it seems and uh or any of the other minorities like for example it's been over a decade for since an asian actor has been nominated for an Os oscar uh, an Eastern Asian actor has been nominated for an Oscar. It, only one openly gay actor has ever been nominated for an Academy Award. He was nominated twice. And le and one of those was for playing an openly gay real d person, a director. Uh, but, you know, Rock Hutt, that's Ian McKellen, Rock Hutt's and Ellen Page, they were nominated before they were out of the closet. Or out ed. Um, uh, what's another is uh, George Cukor. He actually won the director, uh, best director in Sitsi 4. He was openly gay at the time. At the time, he was openly gay. And that's supposed to be, you know, this is one of those eras we got. We always want to look our nose down. We were so much better than people of that back then kind of attitudes. And also then there's, you know, what brought me to the point was Native Americans. Uh, two. Two. And, of course, both supporting actors and both Westerns. Graham Greene for Dances of the Wolves and Big, uh, Chief Dan George for uh, Little Big Man. Uh, no, no, nothing for, like, West Duty. And, mind you, they nominated Jeff Chandler for Broken Arrow for, you know, since we're doing blackface. And he was... He's not good in that either. <laughs> he's not even good in it, man. But, okay, moving on. <laughs> Number three is, uh... Well, yeah, it's a uh, Red River. You know, once again, you know, I talked about Red River. The last three here I've actually all talked about before. <laughs> I chose Red River. I talked about my top five John Wayne films. It's, you know, it's the film that made John Wayne. John Wayne was already a movie star, but this got him kind of the reputation as being a legit actor. Uh, great, great fucking direct. I'm sorry. Mm, twice I said it. Great direction from uh, Howard Hawks. <laughs> And, uh, she's gonna have a foul mouth. That's gonna be all my fault. <sighs> Anyhow, uh, yeah, um, <laughs> Howard Hawks, great direction, amazing, amazing music, amazing performances, also from, you know, 
Montgomery Cliff and Walter Brennan. Uh, the photography and just how, it, what it is, you know, 1948, uh, John Wayne plays Tom Dunson. It basically goes from him uh, settling, building his ranch as a young man, John, decades later, to him having to move for the sake of survival. And just showing something as simple as picking up and moving <laughs> requires how much, it, it, how much time and, and risk and uh, chore uh, uh, coordination it requires. It's it's a it's a trek. It's a big dangerous movie, and it's also an amazing performance from Duke. You see him slowly slip into madness and paranoia. Hey, I just can't speak to it. It's 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 an essential film. It's one of those movies you've never seen it. You like big outdoor movies. You gotta see Red River. Uh, number two is uh the searchers and once again you know well, the searchers 1956 we've talked about before also in my john wayne video directed by john wayne starring john ford uh and uh, uh ward bond uh jeffrey hunter and natalie uh wood the uh is basically after a, a, a deeply deeply racist man played by john wayne ethan edwards he's the absolute best performance of his entire career Goes on a five-year journey hunting down the uh, the, the Indian you know, tribe or family or, or you know group that he uh, that killed, slaughtered his brother's family and kidnapped the girls. Now, where his uh, nephew, who is uh, you know half Indian, is along with him, he's like the adopted son of his brothers. Uh, he he wants to save his sisters. You know that's why he's going on this big adventure. But clearly, John John Wayne's character is nothing but madness and hate and and, and murder in his heart. And it's a great character study. It is one of the prettiest films you'll ever see. And I'm actually thinking about maybe doing that list, doing my list of the most the most visually appealing films of all time. Uh, what exactly are they? Uh, there, there's a couple of them hit my head. You know, I'm, I'm talking about today, right now. Uh, and it brings me to number one. My personal all-time favorite Western is Shane, because Shane's one of my all-time favorite movies. I talked about Shane in my all-time favorite movies. I talked about Shane in my all-time favorite heroes. Uh, this is like the third list Shane stops. <laughs> uh, yeah, you know, Shane is a masterpiece. It's it's a flawless motion, motion picture. Uh, uh, 1953, directed by George Stevens, starring Alan Ladd, Gene Arthur, Jack Palance, and Van Heflin. Uh, oh, and, uh, Brendan DeWild. The, uh, the whole story of it is it's, uh, a gunfighter, a, a man, a jaded man, trying to get past a life of violence, comes to this small, this farm who's... In the middle of a land war with this, you know, big, uh, aggressive, violent man who's apparently from New York. <laughs> and uh, they bring in a gunfighter. And, sh and, sh and, you know, it's not an action movie. It's a film. It's a very, very patient film. There's only two action scenes open. There's a fist fight and a shootout, and they're both riveting. Uh, best fist fight in movie history. One of the most in, one of the most intense shootouts is just I mean like it's I say shootout but you know walking into the room and the conversation is longer than the, you know once people start shooting bodies drop and it's over you know uh, amazing ending uh, there's no living with a killing one of my favorite moments in all film history come back Shane is one of the most famous moments in movie history and it is in my opinion probably the most beautiful movie. In history, the fact that you know there's no mat, there are mat shots, but so much of what you see is right there behind the cast and in front of the camera. Gorgeous, beautiful, no CGI format. No, uh, I talked the, the other day about how great 300 is. Great 300 is a painting come to life, but no, no digital back lot, no CGI can ever match seeing something as majestic as that. Uh, and yeah, Shane is, uh, and you know, like I said, the okay. themes and the greatness and the amazing score. It is, uh, it is my favorite, one of my favorite movies of all time. Probably my favorite movie of all time. Mwah! What are you after? Oh, it's over here. Want the bottle or do you want the puppy? You want that puppy. <laughs> uh, 
Of course, you know, so lets you hear some honorable mentions, other great, great westerns or films like Unforgiven, uh, Rio Bravo, uh, and El Dorado. You know, the hey, no, hey, you can sing in Rio Lobo, I don't care about Rio Lobo. Both True Grit films, I personally feel, feel the Coen's Brothers film is a better movie, even though I love both films. The Three Tints Humor remake, uh... Uh, you know, honorable, honorable mentions, uh, Blazing Saddles, <laughs> and yeah, the good, the bad, and the ugly, you know, just, good, the bad, and the ugly doesn't really, I mean, it gets nudged out just because it's not American, I just think of Westerns as such an American thing, even though there are great Westerns that did not take place in America, nor were they made in America, such as, you know, also, like, Quigley Down Under, awesome movie, uh, and there's great westerns, prestige westerns I didn't mention. You know, movies like uh, uh, Hondo and uh, Dances of the Wolves, Cimarron. Uh, what's what's the one? Um, oh, the, how, how the West Was Won. You know, but you know, there's oh High Noon. They, but these, you know, these weren't my favorites. You know what I mean? And you know, that's the thing. You know, the western has always been one of those genres that that is a, it's a careful balance, just like the gangster movie. It's both it's both audience a crowd pleaser, popcorn fare, as as well as genuine prestige pictures. At the same time, you know, it all depends on you know what part of that balancing beam they they, they prefer to tip to. Uh, and there's the wild, absurd world of westerns too, like you know Jesse James versus dinosaurs, and that wild, the wild, wild west movie. <laughs> uh, there's cartoons like Rango. You know, westerns are a vibrant, rich film genre, and uh, I've known people who just not interested in seeing them at all. It's like, man, you shut yourself off to. Uh, such a huge variety of movies, you know, it's not just all cowboys and horses, and by, by the way, most, my, most, my main reason to watch most westerns is to look at the pretty horses, sorry, but those are horses, dude, I love horses, mwah, anyhow, I like these, I hope y'all like this video, also one more quick thing, I just want to say, uh, if y'all have never seen Big Jake, see Big Jake, it's easily John Wayne's most violent movie, it's a super awesome movie, and I was thinking earlier while preparing this thing, that I bet if that movie was re-released today, as is, unedited, it would get an R rating. That's how awesome, that's a John Wayne movie. That's how awesome and brutal and badass it is. Anyhow, well, kind of rambled in this video. I hope y'all liked it. I'm Jake Davis. Hi, Scar say bye, Scarlett. Bye-bye with the puppy. And we'll catch you on the fly.